Here, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Star Trek Adventures uses uh, what's called the 2D20 system, and we need to start there because it's very rare that you'll be using 2D20. You will probably be using more. There are times when you'll be using fewer, but they will be pretty few and far between. The expectation is that you're going to be bringing at least 2D20 to any task that uh, you decide to undertake. You can we interrupt with, uh, can we interrupt with questions as we go? Yep. Uh, I'll probably forget these later. Do you have a preference for uh, either using an electronic rolling system or just allowing you to roll our dice? Because I, I don't have any physical dice. I honestly have no, no preference at all. I know that Google now has a, a built-in die roller for all polyhedrals. Hmm. Cool. Uh, but I am a big fan of sticking analog. Mm. And so uh, I'm going to be rolling physical dice and whatever anyone else chooses to do is up to them. But if you want, I'll be happy to roll dice for you cool. and tell you what you get. <laughs> Verify it with a camera if you are skeptical. <laughs> so, uh, I, I might take you up on that. Right. But on the other hand, does not this game have funky dice as well? It doesn't. This one has D20s. Oh, okay and D6s. The extent of the funkiness is that the D20 works backward from most expectations, meaning you want to roll low. You're looking for one. Okay. okay. And I've, the D6s I've, yeah. uh, recognize that you're probably going to roll a three or a four, and so those are blanks. Ah, oh, okay. So one and two has some importance, and five and six has some importance, but three and four are, are nothing. Got it. Okay. And so for most tasks, you're going to roll, let's say, two to five D20. And there are some situations such as uh, extended tasks to fix the warp core or um, do a detailed scan of some very complicated device or in combat where you'll roll the D6s on a, successful, on a successful task and see how successful, how much work was done in this turn, how much damage was inflicted on the giant space amoeba or you know, whatever. So 2D20 is sort of an approximate beginning and then we move on from there. Right, so any of the, any of the primary characters, the main characters would expect to be bringing 2D20 to just about any situation I, that gets posed, but um, you really don't want to end up only having 2D20. Right, okay. So, so it's not so bad. All right. Now, the pitch that I gave to each of you was that it would be original series. And that's as far as a Star Trek Adventures GM can go with their pitch. Hey, do you want to play original series Star Trek with me? And people say yes. Then the game master gets to find out what kind of ship. What on earth that means, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. What kind of ship you want to be on. Mm -hmm. And then after we take care of that, what kind of mission you're interested in for that ship. And then once we have those two items, then what kind of characters the life path system is going to create for us or with us all makes sense, right? We're making bridge crew for that mission on that ship. Okay. Okay. So there was are the a end? lot of ships. Question? Was the life path system the reason you thought of me? <laughs> it's I'm, I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of the life path system. One of <laughs> Anthony knows this. Yeah. Original <laughs> Cyberpunk 1989. Uh, Cyber I, have, I have three. Tech. I have three girlfriends. They all want to kill me, and I think I'm gay. <laughs> yes, I'm on it. My hair is purple. Yes, <laughs> and I'm ready. Give no me that answer. guy. I play him. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I mean, the obvious choice that 
I think probably leaps to mind is the same class of ship as the Enterprise, the Constitution class, um, or Constellation class, depending on who you listen mm -hmm. to. But uh, that's that's one option, but we're not restricted to it. Um, there's also the, what side am I on? Over my, nope, over this shoulder, the Miranda up there in the top corner. And then there are various smaller ships like single nacelle ships. And uh, I really always liked those single nacelle littler ones. Um, although I, I don't know which one, but I always liked the idea of a slightly littler ship. Although again, I, I like the, the idea of being out and about. So, um, you know, like not just running back scenes into known planets, but, you know, out and about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the if there's some camp. sort of, I guess, I guess what I'm saying, and I don't want to be the, the dictator here, I'll be happy with whatever anybody does. What I'm saying is that I kind of didn't want to have all the gun, all the computing, all the presence <laughs> of the Enterprise. Mm -hmm. You know, let the Enterprise be itself, right? The badass over there. You know, if, we, if we're a little littler, I'm good. I'm good with that. There's, yeah, that there's, a good idea. there's some advantages to that. Uh, yep. <laughs> if, if we're a small group, a small ship, there's more multi-role. So mm -hmm. we'd probably be more uh, generic crew and would be expected to cover multiple sessions as opposed to specialized on the, on the Enterprise bridge. Um, It'll be easier for newbies to figure out a smaller ship systems, I suspect. <laughs> uh, and we also have more. We also have more adversity this way too. Yeah, right? yeah. It's That's like, true. man, if we were the Enterprise, we can <laughs> handle this shit. <laughs> <laughs> the, the as a counterpoint, I gave one thought to an Enterprise type thing that we could uh, sort of work something out that might be feasible sort of like the night crew on an enterprise. That way we'd be sort of like a smaller team that doesn't have the full resources of, a, of the, the typical, like we're, we're the replacement. We're the people that have the shift that nobody wants, that type of thing. Oh, so kind of like a crap enterprise. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, yeah. There's there are there were actually a couple of uh, right, like the old constitution class the that older disappeared ships that are still yeah. still going on. Yeah, mm, yeah. maybe so. Yeah. Um, but I do like the smaller ship. Like, a, is there like a fast scout ship or something? Isn't the like Miranda kind of like that? Yeah, from yeah. that. I guess it was made famous by Wrath of Khan, but the Reliant, the the ship that Khan stole, uh, in, yep. in uh, is the Miranda class. Okay. So it's okay. it's the saucer section and the nacelles and a multi-purpose roll pod. All right. So it's it's far more flexible right. i guess you'd say but also more specific so um, we can get, to, one of those sounds cool especially like but i also like the idea of it being kind of a slightly older one so it's not like the new hot off the you know <laughs> i just i'm even wrath of khan is almost too flashy for me i mean I, i'm thinking like original series i mean these things you you get the model you get the model in the box remember the models right that you could buy and make mm -hmm. And they, they kind of look just like the one on the show because the one on the show is just a plastic model. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Plywood. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so that's the other choice that goes along with this is original series spans the, the 60s TV show up until the end of Undiscovered Country, the sixth Star Trek film. Mm -hmm. And so the suggestion I'd like to put forward is do we want to be operating in the time of the series, the television series, before the films? Or do we want to be operating in the period of time where we're at the end of the films? Ooh. I have opinions, but... So let's start with Casey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm up for anything because I'm not a... I don't belong to the particular era of Star Trek. In fact, my knowledge of Star Trek is, I would say, not very... And reaching, <laughs> so I'm willing. I'm, I'm willing to. I'm willing to catch up on on anything I, I need to watch or need to read. But cool. yeah, in terms of that that particular period of Star Trek lore, I, I'm definitely not that of that of that era. <laughs> okay, 
Joe? Certainly remember Joseph. it. I certainly remember it all, but uh, uh, <laughs> not sure if the differences between the start and the end of the original series seem less to me than the difference between the original series and other series. So the range in there, I don't see as having a lot of differences. Um, I actually would love the original series TV show as mm -hmm. produced in the 60s and yeah. the films not to be part of that. Yeah. that we, it, are, uh, we, are, we are there in the 60s and we're doing that show, except better, of course. Yeah, <laughs> that one certainly had the maximum cheese. So that uh, it has that advantage. I'm not sure I buy that, but let's no? not go down oh, any okay. debates. Go ahead. Okay, <laughs> yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. Right. So, um, what that choice informs are like references that players can can draw in on their own with confidence. Meaning, we've got three years of Star Trek uh, as live action. We've got two seasons of animated. Star Trek, whatever thing that's in there that would be in a, in a Starbase data file or in a Starfleet data file that makes sense for your characters to talk about can just be introduced, right? Um, because it's, it's one big happy fleet uh, kind of thing. So that uh, as not to put an emphasis on you should have Star Trek lore. But if you have Star Trek lore, it can be brought in without, uh, do you think my character would know about the creatures that uh, <laughs> live, uh, you know, they, they, they tunnel through rock? Would I know about that? It's like, if, if you know about that because you watched the episode, then you know about that and just, and just go with it. Um, so that's, this is the reason for the choice. Also, there's the aesthetic. The, uh, what types of uniforms are the characters wearing? Why, they're wearing very comfortable velour, thank you very much. <laughs> or they're wearing really uncomfortable looking polyester maroon balloons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Emphatic agreement, underscore, underscore. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so, so there you go. So it sounds like we are leaning toward the series then. Okay. That uh, is great. So that's what we can imagine. And so all the ships that you see behind me are actually available except for the green one, which is Klingon. You can't have that, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Now the mission type things uh, are things like, I mean, the, the classic example from the series is that the Enterprise and other vessels of its type are on missions of essentially exploration uh, where they're supposed to be expanding contact with strange new worlds and, and, and all of that stuff. However, many political and other life events get in the way of, of their of their expansion. But while that's going on, these ships are uncovering things, you know, like they uncover new civilizations, such as the Gorn. Well, what mm -hmm. happens after the Enterprise continues, you know, mm -hmm. further out into unknown space? What ships go and contact the Gorn? So there's, there's diplomatic oh. missions. And, you know, there are purely scientific missions and missions of mercy and, and whatnot. So just as people, what sounds, what sounds interesting? Ron, you want to go? Well, my take is that I like the idea of being out and about in the fringes. But since I already said that I don't want the badassery of the enterprise in all of its glory anyway. So where does that leave us? It seems to me, I like what you said, that the Enterprise and ships like it are expanding the range. But once the Enterprise has like done that somewhere, it's going off somewhere else. So sort of the next wave of, of interaction, where it's still the frontier, it's not part of the Federation, or if it is, then it's in some difficult part. 
Um, so there's still a lot to be done. I mean, science has to be followed up upon. Uh, conflict has to be followed up upon. It might still be ongoing. So there's still adventures to be had. And maybe even things that the Enterprise didn't bump into, right? There's another planet, right? Stuff like that. So there's all kinds of, there's, the, it's not quite as forging off into the unknown as the Enterprise may be. It is, however, still, I mean, we're not just running around in the Federation doing Federation stuff. Does that work? I mean, so we still have science, we still have discovery. We still have, um, you know, stuff to do that is still frontier-like, unpredictable. Um, we know a little bit, but not necessarily everything. Um, does that make any sense? Yeah, I like, the, I like that idea because it feels like we are following up to what right. what's the aftermath of every episode right. or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. So there's the, un, the untold story. <laughs> right, well, <laughs> untold yeah. Untold stories. And <laughs> exactly, and, and also untold stories of untold stories because there are other ships besides the Enterprise doing this right. too. So right. we could be in a completely unknown thing as far, that's just consistent with the series rather than being embedded in it. Right, um, right. So, the, the, but yeah, cool. I like that. If, I that think... I, I just saw a cartoon not too long ago. This is this is just perfect timing. It it uh, it was something about the crew that specializes in second contact. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it someone actually did a, a spoof of this. So uh, that uh, we could we could call ourselves the second <laughs> contact crew. That's something. actually pretty amusing. It's kind of like the episode ends with problem solved, and then we <laughs> show up, and it's like we discover. Uh, no, it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the details, guys. Yeah. Come on. The right, details. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, it sounds then like we're leaning toward diplomatic more than anything else, right? Of course, mm -hmm. it's Starfleet, I, there'll be science. I don't know. I, I, uh, I don't I know. I mean, there, the, the problems in question mm -hmm. could be much more severe than that. In my Protection opinion. and security? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Can I throw uh, an alternate out there, just a point of discussion? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Border Patrol. I, uh, I've, I always like Romulans. Romulans uh, are lovely. <laughs> Romulans are lovely. And well, maybe it is these sort of difficult ship. things. I mean, mm -hmm. is or is not this asteroid belt inside the border? I mean, you're going to tell me that that, I mean, it's not like they strung a barbed wire fence across space there, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. They, they it's, clearly show us guys like Cyrano Jones and, and right. uh, Harry Mudd who are trafficking mm -hmm. in the places where they shouldn't go. Mm -hmm. And I mean, how does Bones get his Romulan ale and stuff like right. that? So, um yeah so small yeah small ship so protection and security is kind of exciting sure there there definitely could be some flexibility in there as well yeah. Yeah. yeah there's certain well there's data gathering for sure at the mm -hmm. very least not just of like the romulans but like what is on that planet right mm -hmm. how come the romulans yeah. don't go to that one yeah. oh good let's figure it out yeah mm -hmm. okay <laughs> you know, i like this well uh, mm -hmm. one of the very unusual things about the game uh, at least from my point of view, unusual, is that the characters that you make are actually highly competent. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the first time that I played Shadowrun, which actually was with, with Joseph, uh, I was very surprised at how my starting character, which was made with starting build points, actually felt like they could do something. It was one of the first right. games I had played where mm -hmm. competence was assumed rather than earned. Mm -hmm. And this game dials that way up, right? You are the bridge crew of a Starfleet ship. Are we making experienced officers? That was the, that was the, the assumption in the rules. That's, a, that's a, a one choice that we get to make. Are we young officers? Are we experienced or are we veterans? And this is your choice to make, not, not mine. And it can be a mix. You don't have to choose. I like a mix, actually. Yeah. I think a yeah. mix would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, and, one of you, <laughs> even even if we all choose the same, the opportunity yeah. for a mix is kind of what I'm right. looking for. What yeah, I, so I pick agree. whatever you want. Yeah, one of you should be considering the idea of taking on the leadership role, right? So the captain. sitting in the captain's chair, sitting in Rule. the XO's chair, that kind of stuff. Um, because really, what the game is built around is the away team, 
right? Mm-hmm. So in the original series, that's Kirk and Spock and Bones, because why not? But, the, the, uh, the stars of the show, that's what happens, <laughs> right? Right. right. <laughs> but... Uh, um, well, you know, on a smaller ship, actually, that makes a little more sense than the usual fan snarking. Yeah, right? yeah, I mean, does. fans <laughs> have been snarking that for decades, but really on a ship with 60 people, I mean, that's what we do, yeah. right? Yeah, and who's going to tell the captain? <laughs> uh, no, sir, you can't. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So the, the captain might only be a commander, right, in terms I of really kind of, this, this sounds awful, but okay, this is not a suggestion. This is just through superficial contact with the rules so far. And I don't plan to become like the rules jock either. But it does seem just meta, just as a cool notion, wouldn't it be kind of fun if the captain were a supporting character, one of the supporting roles, not a primary? Uh, that sounds kind oh, of yeah. fun. Yeah, I was actually curious about, does, does the rule imply that somebody has to be the captain or can well, the rules still work? Here, here's how it works. Uh, in my previous Star Trek Adventures campaign, um, there was a baby about to be born. And there was one member who was not sure when he needed to go back to Canada. So there was a lot of uncertainty about who was actually going to be able to make it through the whole campaign. And so nobody was the captain. The captain was done as a supporting character, which meant that somebody played sometimes somebody right. played the right. captain. And there were I, li- I love I that idea. If, if anybody does object, wants to be the captain, that's great. That's cool for your main character. Go right ahead. I won't stop you. But if nobody does, it still works. Then I love the idea of the captain being a supporting role. You know, somebody that we know about who does things we occasionally play but isn't actually our baby as, you know, a player. Now, the rules do assume that someone will be the captain, and they set it up so that once things start happening, that there is a synergy between your talents. Each particular Mm -hmm. character will have a number of of very specific, like, rank and role-specific talents, and they synergize in really interesting ways. And you don't really want the game master to be the one handling that Um, right right and if they're a supporting character then they're not nearly so well developed as they will be if someone's playing them so in our campaign after the baby was born and after the guy came back from canada he really started pushing for promotion and he got himself promoted to captain and our backup captain our our secondary character captain retired out of Starfleet. ah i see okay and, uh, huh. so what would you what would you suggest we do, Anthony, in regard to this? Um, would it just I, be easier if one of us played the captain? It's it's not any easier. Uh, okay. It's probably you'll have you'll probably enjoy the effects better. Okay. Um, and if we look at the original series as our as our touchstone, Spock is the executive officer, and he functions kind of like um, Kirk's. Uh, second thought, right? Mm-hmm. There's Kirk's impulse, and then there's then there's there's Spock's his second reason. thought, his reason, mm-hmm. right? And then they come up with a with a good plan together. Yeah. And then there's Bones because he's the ship's doctor. He can override anybody. His rank is one right. step higher than the highest rank on the ship, automatically. Right. In in medical matters and so on. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. there, that's the game doesn't make somebody the boss and the other people no i get that part yeah that that doesn't bug me at all that's fine um cool well if anybody else wants to play the captain that's fantastic i myself would shy away from it well let's see what happens when we go through the life right okay okay yeah Yeah. all right Mm -hmm. so we've gone for protection and security as our role which means the type of missions that i'm likely to have starfleet send your way which is independent of what may end up happening because of actual play, right? Uh, There are aid and relief missions. There are patrol missions. There's port of call missions. And there are tactical missions, which all of which line up to the the actual examples that you gave back to Mm -hmm. me, right? Uh, Dealing with the Romulans. There's also a, a hostile border with the Klingons. There's no peace with the Gorn. And right. So it's, we got some pretty interesting options there. So done and done. So 
it looks like then if we go with the Miranda class, which can receive different types of refit based on mission, mm -hmm. then we have a small crew and uh, can meet up with that uh, with that requirement of yours as well. I think that sounds wonderful. Yep. Okay. Sounds like a good package. Now, what I what I did was uh, I use Microsoft Teams for a lot of my games. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. I've used uh, it. You've mm -hmm. used it. Good. Yeah. So I'm going to share my screen here in a second. I'm going to try and share my screen. There it is. Okay, so what you should be seeing now is ah! Microsoft Teams. I do. And I have created a group called Star Trek Adventures, which has a general room, which has no posts because it's just me. And then the examples of play section. But it also includes a wiki. Ah, oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm beginning to get a. I'm beginning to get a grip. Yes, I. Right. On what on what your purpose here is. So in the wiki, uh, I have. Uh, <laughs> I have summarized rules that people uh, can never find in the book. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no, this is, this like is great. This is your distilled version that we're always producing for our games in right. one way or another. Right. Okay, and uh, what this allows us to do is that as members of this team, any one of us can actually launch a Zoom meeting and it contacts all of us automatically just Ooh. at one push of a button uh, rather okay. than me sending out four invites and, and things like that. So it also has a scheduler, the Star Trek Adventures schedule. And you see that we have Stardate Zero, the planning session, which is happening Right now. Right now. Speed. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. So this is well, my suggestion have... for organiz organizing. Play. Let's let's do all. I'm I'm I conform. I mean I'm I concede. I comply. <laughs> so is everybody okay with me sending an invitation to use this uh, to use Teams? Sure. Good. All right. There is a web app version of this, is there? Because I'm using Teams for my work, as in like my my job work. So. I'm, yep. a bit, I'm a bit afraid of the interactions with, you know, accounts and all that. Yeah, I use it on <laughs> my phone. I use it uh, uh, in a variety of different formats. Uh, so I, I check out and see uh, what your options are uh, so that uh, we don't. Yeah, we don't want you. We don't want your character problems. popping up in your work feed. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. The loving PowerPoint presentation I make of the you know the 3D rotating. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, structure. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's that's a good point. I the uh, the account I have is also through my work at the moment. <clears throat> I wonder uh, if we can before you send the invite. Let me check to see if I can set right. up an account with a different email. Yep. And whether I can log in with that other right. email. And instead. switch between work account and you know play right. account. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So we'll put that uh, and on hold for now, and we'll just use the, this, the shared screen. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go into the wiki now. Welcome to the wiki. Now, um, character creation is not something that I envision us actually finishing today, just mm -hmm. to be clear. Uh, but it's something that I do want to start. So we've already done we've chosen the contemporary with the five-year mission of the enterprise. Mm -hmm. right. Yep. I've put the species uh, table here just so you can begin imagining some options. Uh, in play, yeah. in this era, we have useful observable information for the Andorians, the Denobulans, the humans, the Tellarites, the Trill, and the Vulcans. If the species doesn't seem familiar to you as a player, I think at this point I would recommend just letting it go. Let your next right. player, let your next character. I, I confess that when I was looking through this, I, I sprung for the PDF last week. So I, that's my contact with the rules, which was Good. one week's checkout. 
not trying to memorize it. But I, I, re I rebelled instantly against the Denobulans and the Trills because those are inferred by the authors to be part of this era as opposed to appearing in the series. We didn't get to see them. Yeah, so right. And so I'll therefore, my, I, I recoiled and said, no, no, no franchise interpretation here. <laughs> are they or are they not in the original series? I'm done. Right. Um, now, what the species does for you is it as we're building the characters we're going to be assigning points in various places and the species give a plus one here or a plus one there and they give access to to talents that other species don't have like the vulcan neck pinch mm -hmm. oh. so that's all that is there are three types of characters which we've referenced there's your player character a main character there are supporting characters which we will be creating on the fly. And the ship we have chosen, the size of that ship has an impact on the number of the oh, supporting okay. characters we can create in an episode. All right, so if, if Sulu runs down to astrobiology for something, there's going to be a crew person there. Yeah, the Enterprise is practically, I mean, what, 430, if I recall correctly, right? Right, so, so it's, it, it's yeah. huge. So There's they get to people, create yeah. a larger number of, of, uh, of these crew members. What's our crew size, like 100 or something? I don't have I'm that guessing. in okay. my memory, but it's, it's, it's definitely smaller some, than, yeah. than, uh, than the Enterprise. Okay. Then there are NPCs. These, and there are background characters that, that just walk down the the hallway mm -hmm. <laughs> carrying stuff but uh, furniture i like to call them yeah okay so this brings us to the life path overview is this large enough is this text large enough for you to yeah, see yeah. on this um, yeah it's fine fine for me yeah okay so just this is just the overview step mm -hmm. one is is species which is why we talked about it step two is the environment where they were born step three is how they were raised Step four is their time in Starfleet Academy. Step five, how's your career been so far? This has great and that's, options. That's where it. you choose like your, that's where we choose young versus that's experience. That. There's three, right? there's mm -hmm. actually three. Yeah. There's, there's young, just, just out of the academy basically. Then there's experienced, which yep. the rules say is the default. Right. And then there's veteran where you get the veteran trait, which makes you kind of a badass. Right. So, um, so the, the young oh, trait yeah. also is equivalent to the veterans trait, but is used in different. Right. It's the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's kind of cool. And I, am I verify, I can, if it's okay, can I verify that we are going to be laissez faire for what you want your character to be in this way? Yeah. It's, it's, it's on you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then step six career events. Mm hmm. And then the finishing touches, like, do you have a communicator? Yes, you do. Right. Stuff like that. Right. Okay. Characters are built from six attributes and six disciplines. Disciplines, think of like skills. And Printed. there you go. They are control, daring, fitness, insight, presence, and reason. So I think I like the way that they Trek, really parse out personality with these things. Yeah. I mean, it's really, you know, there's a lot of personality created by some synergy there. It's, it's pretty slick. Now this is like the white wolf games. It's like uh, other games where you will pair right. an attribute with a discipline and there will be one that seems like it's a perfect match in most situations but sometimes we'll want to make a different pairing uh, for right. specific situations and, and we can do that. And you are free and I'll often ask, cause it's just my way, how you'd like to approach a problem, mm -hmm. right? There may be something that's obvious to me, but the way that you view your character or the way that you're viewing the situation that's arising suggests something different to you. Like I would like to try this with, with my presence rather than with engineering. Right. You know. mm -hmm. And then we will we will describe that whole event playing out differently based on those on those choices. Then there's the focus. This is the hardest part of character creation. Didn't understand because, it a bit. 
because you basically are making it up yourself. Uh, so let's say we're talking about a security, the security discipline, right? And you'll be asked to pick a focus and someone might say, well, I want hand-to-hand -hand combat. And so you'd write hand-to-hand -hand combat as your focus because as a security officer, you're thinking I'll probably be getting involved in combat. And this doesn't make as much sense for the doctor character uh, to take. They might want something like trauma surgery, right? Mm -hmm. So there, is a, there are some examples here, but it is, it is fairly open. The, the trick is that it should be specific, like hand phaser or computers, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be so broad as to apply to everything, <laughs> right? And it has a huge benefit because if you have an active focus, the successes you roll, you'll have more, you'll get more successes as a result if you roll within a certain range. Can I ask a question about the focuses? Yeah. Uh, I presume that they, um, that, that, okay. Do they have to be tied to a discipline formally? that you get one per discipline. So in that sense, yes. Oh. Okay. Got However, it. okay. the existence of the focus will matter whenever it matters, regardless of the discipline being invoked. Right. Got it. Okay. Gotcha. Perfect. Thank Which you. Which also makes people wig out. Like, how do I choose? <laughs> no, right. No. Okay. Okay. And then there are talents, and there's a, there's a very small list of talents, and as you go through the life path system, they're going to be, uh, the opportunity to take them will be given to you. And, uh, and you'll have talents because you are a specific species, because you're in a specific role on the ship, and uh, that sort of stuff. The other thing that makes characters are values. And similar to values for the ship are the directives, right? the, the directives of Starfleet. Values are statements that you're going to create yourself about the character. And I can show you an example by scrolling like mad. And apparently very slowly. <laughs> example values. A starship is a home, its crew a family. You can imagine Star Trek, uh, maybe the character of Uhura as an example, who might have this as a value, the way that she comes in and supports other characters and, uh, and binds people together. She spends her time in you know, the lounge singing for people and working on morale and, and this kind of stuff. And what this value does is guide the player in terms of behavior, but it also sets up a situation where when this particular value matters, a currency is opened up for use in the game, which is called determination, which gives you two free successes, basically, when you spend it. Okay. So it's a huge effect, right? So it's going to, it's going to happen rarely. It may only happen- Well, that's when we get to see you, you know, do yeah, yeah. you. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. your thing. It also means the value can be challenged. Situations can crop up, which would really force the character to reassess mm -hmm. their opinion. And this is a way to earn more of this determination currency by to accepting- face your, face your values and decide what to do about it, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and it, it's on your hands. It's, uh, I don't know how many of you have played Pendragon, uh, but it's a similar kind of thing going on. The, uh, a situation arises and you, the, the character information is telling you this is bothering your character in some way. But as the player, you decide I'm, it's not going to affect me now and there's a cost for that decision or it is right. going to affect me now and there's a benefit for going mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. So the cost in this game is that you don't earn a new point of determination. Right. So it's kind of interesting. 
right? Uh -huh. uh, you're turning down this this meta currency. You buy. would be more motivated if you act on it, but you didn't. So okay, yeah. All right, and that's it. That's how characters are made. I'm sure that's okay. as clear as mud now. But uh, shall we begin with some with some wow with some choices? I confess that although I have not, I'd waited until this conversation for important decisions like values and stuff, but I have actually walked through a bit of character creation provisionally, depending on what we came up with, whether I would keep it or not. Um, so I'm part of the way along, super, I'm one toe in the water along in this process already. You, you can help us newbies then as well. <laughs> That's the hope, yeah. <laughs> so here's okay. what, would you like the official character sheet? Should I send you that file? Yeah, I, I, did, I printed mine out from the PDF already, so. Yeah, I did get the uh, the free stuff from, uh, P, what is it, uh, PDF, drive through PDF, yeah. yeah. So I've got the fillable uh, oh, PDF okay. form. I didn't buy the actual book yet though. Uh, so that is next on my list. I only got the quick start rules or something like that, which did not have uh, character generation. Yeah, it drives me crazy when the, they don't put character generation in the quick, like here, here are six they have to, wacky NPCs yeah. for your book. <laughs> they have to give you some reason to buy the full package. I think I, that's, uh, I, that's marketing yeah, that puts that on. Yeah. How about leave combat out? Let's have a, let's have a, a yeah, seriously. <laughs> scenario with no combat in it. Yeah. Is there no yeah. combat in this game? Okay. So Do, be, before we start, just a, a quick question. Uh, Ron has already said he doesn't, uh, he wants to avoid the captain's seat. Uh, uh, KC, have you given any thought to this? I would like to avoid it as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I, I gave it some thought even before this, and I wouldn't mind uh, if, it, if it makes sense. The captain, uh, I, my captain. <laughs> I I did give some thought that like uh, I thought it would be cool if it were an NPC, so we could all have more of an excuse to go on missions together as our primary uh, character. Or at least but maybe it, a role. Maybe a, the you guys are familiar with this game's feature of supporting cast, yeah, right? Yeah. They are played mm -hmm. by us, but they are somewhat more superficial in their attributes, yeah. and. Um, and so we still get to make the decisions for that character in the moment, but we sort of collectively own them. Yeah, cool, cool. Also, Which is, as part of this game's experience uh, rules, you will be making decisions at certain points when you're, when you're improve, improving your character, uh, where those secondary characters also develop over time. So we see Sulo right. and Chekhov develop into right. you know the navigator and the, mm -hmm. the tactician and, and that sort of stuff. Ooh. So we really do have an aesthetic choice about whether we want the captain to slowly come into focus with us as non-captain main characters, at least to start. That's I, I like that idea aesthetically. I think it's kind of cool. But but, I, uh, but I'll just say w one more one last time that uh, a PC captain. Mm -hmm really helps the other characters in ways that it's difficult for me to describe now. Joseph, you're up. Captain Joe. <laughs> I, but bless my, you with the life path. Thing. My, exactly. That's, that's sort of my current decision. If, uh, okay. if, that pa if it makes sense with the life path I end up with, uh, I have no problem with it. I don't think I will try to force it, though. Right. Okay. The, uh, the life path system is built around the option of random selection, but I think it's written with the expectation of choice. It, it says that I, what I encountered in the rules was that go ahead and roll, but when you come to any category where you say, oh, I hope I get that, then just take just it, it. Then just take it. So it is very on and off about that you can choose not to roll when something comes up and everything is snapped into your head where it's like, perfect, this guy's communications all the way, then just do it. Yeah, exactly. Don't, uh, okay. don't accept 
this mission, this impossible mission, if you don't want to. Right. All right. So let's begin with species then. Um, yeah. It's possible to roll or select. And, and there it is highlighted. We have Andorians, humans, Tellarites, and Vulcans as the classic available races. If you remember the Andorians, they were blue with antennae. Blue antennae, right. Which is also tricky because the only one we really met was fake. <laughs> oh, yeah. so we never really met a real one, you know, with lines. So right. You've been surgically also, altered. Yeah. Just I really hope I don't keep talking like this because I'm starting I'm starting to turn into that guy. I can feel it. <laughs> I really can. And I really but the trouble with that guy is that when he arises in your mind, he doesn't feel like that guy. Yeah. And we so, can totally take turns being that guy. Right. I, <laughs> I my toes. I will curl benefit in a lot from that guy. Yeah. My my <laughs> Here's my thinking, okay? Now, totally override me, anybody. But my thinking is that as far as my experience of the original series goes, Spock was an outlier. He was even considered a bit deviant by the Vulcans and was unusual enough in Starfleet to endure casual racism that everybody thought was funny. Right. Sure. So it's not like there were non-humans all over Starfleet, right? I mean, you, you almost get the idea that they wouldn't, that Starfleet wouldn't really have liked it. They preferred humans. Humans were, you know, what made Starfleet and getting, and Spock is very much Jackie Robinson. <laughs> um, One explanation that I like right. is that in this era, in Kirk's era, the members of the Federation were contributing ships and they crewed their own ships with their own right. people. And later on, when they really started to believe it's, that, yeah. you know, then they began to mix, but, and when the budget increased. But. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the idea being, I mean, I have no objection to anybody playing a non-human. What I am saying is that that context makes it more interesting to do so. It's not like we have a rainbow crew for all these different species on dozens of ships. You know, it would be notable if we had an Andorian, you know, dude, then everyone knows we're the ship with the Andorian. Right? <laughs> yeah. Does that make yeah. sense to anybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it does. Okay. So leave it. Andorian captain. The Andorian captain, the Andorian oh, yeah. captain with the Telluride <laughs> navigator and the drill exit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it is a little more difficult here because the only ones that I'm really familiar with are the Andorians, Vulcans, and maybe Trill. The others, probably less so. They, they don't even make Yeah, the Tellarite are those, those pig-nosy dudes with the beard. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the high I mean, all of, this comes from, all of this comes from just barely one episode anyway, right? Yeah. Journey yeah, to Babel, yeah, so. Um, what is your fault? I'm going to go, I'm gonna go crazy and take a roll. Okay. Somebody want to hit a roll for me? Oh, you need uh, a d20? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, can, I can roll yeah. for you. Yes. Okay. The, the, the list here does sort of cover this because it Dude, has a you're going 50 to be percent thrilled. chance. You're yeah. going to be thrilled. I rolled a 20. Vulcan. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, it, pure Vulcan. Cool, cool. I am the, human, by the way. My character okay. is human. I will most okay. likely pick human, yes. <clears throat> Wow. Okay. So do you like Vulcan humans. or do you want to trade it in? On no, I, I do like Vulcan. It's certainly one of the ones that I know better. Okay. Uh, and I like the role-playing challenge trying to not make this Spock. character a robot. Right. Or Spock. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Cool. It's, right. it's going to be, be a, more there challenging. There will be an interesting challenge. Yeah. 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 Now, just I should say that there is the opportunity to be uh, mixed heritage. And, and anybody who decides to be human and Vulcan, we will kick down the street <laughs> and say, done <laughs> already. They, uh, <clears throat> to the enterprise you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, what about half Vulcan, half Andorian? Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, no. Imagine. <laughs> now now who's the, that guy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's, let's run. Th I've got the, the human in here. So for our two humans, <clears throat> we begin with an opportunity for your first 
um, value. So you will have four values when we're done. This is a no pressure environment. Mostly if a value springs to mind <clears throat> now, something that you'd like to portray as a Starfleet officer, make a note of it. But otherwise assign yourself homework that you need to come up right. with a value that's tied to your humanity or your Vulcanness in, in, the, in your case. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Can I say that it took me a minute to figure this out and it might be helpful to know there is a bank of talents available to all characters in the book. <clears throat> so at this point, you could either take one of those, but as a human, you may also choose for your one talent at this point, one of these. So you can either go to that bank and pick one there, or you can take one of these. Right. That's the idea. Um, it just so happens that I did choose one of these, but I could have gone to the bank and found one. Right. right. There are some that are like off limits to, uh, as part of what they are, but, but yes. Right. Um, so that's value. Attributes. Like we said, we have six attributes. And they start at seven each, and then you get to add three or one, add one to three of them if you're a human. What's up with the Vulcan, just out of curiosity? Well, I have to bring that up on my screen now. Okay. I did look at a couple of reviews, and the Vulcans do seem to have pretty nasty... Uh, oh, stuff. man. Well, that's because yeah. <laughs> that, Spock got Wolverine, right, through the course yeah. of the series? Yeah. 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 And, and he, he can... He's only half. Like, oh, for God's sake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And he used yeah, to be a samurai. Oh, and he's immortal. And he's got <laughs> his claws are adamantium. Uh, yeah. Why his do I need skeleton to prove? is adamantium. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. No, come on. You don't really need Not even 1980 yet. Stop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. The Vulcans receive plus one to control, plus one to fitness and plus one to reason. Unlike the humans, you don't have the flexibility of putting your plus ones where you want them to go. Oh, right, right. So the, you know, the, the legend of Gary Gygax lives on. <laughs> well, it, it does kind of come from Pool Anderson, doesn't it? Everybody, all the aliens are kind of, you know, a little fixed and the humans are the adaptable. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So an example value just as an example value, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. As a Vulcan. <laughs> as as mm. never demonstrated in the original series. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> it was a value frequently challenged. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> challenged but not practiced. Yeah. There are three, count them, three possible talents you can choose uh, because you have access to them as a Vulcan. The first one is Kolinar. You have undergone the ritual journey that. to purge all emotion, uh, which yeah. allows mm -hmm. you to reduce the difficulty of all tasks to resist coercion, mental intrusion, pain, and other mental attacks by two. This is significant. It also requires me to produce situations where you'll be experiencing coercion, mental intrusion, yeah, pain, okay. and other Absolutely. mental attacks. Otherwise, where's the yeah. fun in that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're immune to it, we're never going to face them. Yeah, no. Right, right. Well, anyway, the, the point is, can we not go through like every single option in detail? I mean, yeah. the Vulcan yeah, I can, go and check I can dig out. into that, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next one is mind meld, and the last one is the nerve pinch, and we know what those, mm -hmm. what those do. Yeah. All right, so that's that's how the Vulcan works. Mm -hmm. okay. cool. So that's the first thing, just by picking your species. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So would a value up. be something like uh, enlighten the universe? Sure. That's the first thing that sort of comes to mind as a vague. I'll go through the book and look at some of the suggestions. Well, wait, our first value actually comes from our up, from our original environment, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. come from species. It's Ah, okay. Right. So as you're making these decisions, this is the first one that yeah. 
that the, the first opportunity to do so. Mm -hmm. So, so it gives you a, it gives you a a trait, or sorry, gotcha. yes, it gives you a trait. Okay. Step two. Environment. Now here, we only have six choices. A home world, busy colony, an isolated colony, a frontier colony, starship or starbase, and other species world. So you see we're moving from a very nurtured uh, part of the, right. you know, one of us kind of environment to ever more extreme a sense mm -hmm. of isolation. Um, I already rolled, so I will again Which be the example. I got the Starbase, Starship or Starbase, and I chose ah, a Starbase. Starbase, cool. So um, not that that makes a difference mechanically, but you know, aesthetically, I decided I liked the idea of a Starbase. And so, um, and so that led me, first of all, it tells you what you get in terms of plus ones to your stuff. And then also, so I recorded that. And then also that's where I choose a value. So I actually come up with something about having been brought up on a star base. What is my character's notions because of that? Um, and I did. Exactly. Um, All right. so, so I guess you guys could roll, roll or roll. choose a roll. I'll uh, choose to just roll. for, uh, okay. are we rolling this now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. I'll yeah. I'll go get my dice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Did you have a question? I yeah. I was going to uh, I was going to ask KC what his race was because if he's also oh, he's human. I may oh human as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I may I I may roll, but I sort of don't want homeworld here. I uh, think right. Very right. useful, especially if I'm going to be Vulcan. If I grew up around humans. Right. either on another species world especially or especially uh, that notion i mean when we go when we go to vulcan in the show <laughs> it's kind of clear that not one of those vulcans has stepped off of that place <laughs> yeah I mean, exactly they yeah. spock is fucking weird <clears throat> as far as they're concerned yeah, yeah. um yeah cool uh so vulcan cool are you guys gonna roll what do you get someone want to throw me a d6 sure uh sure okay um, I have rolled the D6 Roll for one. you and it has come up one, but you didn't want a home world. Yeah. Reroll a one for me, please. Oh, reroll. Is, okay. is that allowed? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't see why not. Uh, okay. this time I got a three for an isolated colony. Cool. Okay. The Casey, most of the get? colonies yeah. would certainly be Rolling human now. anyway. I, I get a one. <laughs> okay. No, that's cool. Right. The dice You're a human Earth, to be right? a, Yep. Yeah. From yeah. Earth. <laughs> well, it's good practice for the D20 rolls. You'll want to roll as mm. many ones as you possibly can. Yeah, <laughs> certainly. Um, so there's various, um, you know, pluses and stuff you get from it. I don't have those recorded. I do. Um, but right we do set a value, though. Oh, wait, here they are. Cool. Yeah. Values, so isolated calendar. And a discipline. Mm -hmm. So they all work along this line. So at this step, you gain a value. Mm -hmm. And this one reflects your environment and your culture. And then mm -hmm. the attributes uh, is plus one reason or insight your choice. Right. So thinking about that from the Vulcan perspective, you can see how they start to get pushed toward reason. You know, yeah. Might yeah. Might be. Mm -hmm. uh, insight's useful too. Discipline, choose one and increase it by one. Engineering, wow. science, or medicine. Right. For that isolated colony. And for I, I think I think I may have to pause here a little bit, and I have to get going. Uh, oh. This this week is sort of a hell week for me, so I, I do have a lot of meetings this week. Uh, if we're if we're going to be starting up uh, next week, I can I can definitely start setting aside a couple hours on this time slot. But uh, for this week, I just need to uh, yeah, sure. I need to fly. Okay. Okay. I, I will pick up this uh, this PDF and start going through some of this myself. Uh, nice. I like the direction this is going so far, so I I want to keep on going and see where it leads. Glad to hear it. Okay. Stay safe. Yep. It was nice chatting with all of you, and all we'll right, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Talk to you right. soon. Bye. Did All you right. want to go so, to Homeworld, Casey? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's go look at Homeworld. <laughs>
and see what he. Oh, I have the PDF open on the side here. So oh, okay, I'll okay. See what it says. So in that case, I'm... Anthony, could you scroll to the space station just so I can make sure I didn't screw it up? Sure thing. Because. Uh, okay, there we go. All right, so I choose. I chose that and I chose that for the discipline. Right. And on then, um, right. And then I, and I also set up a value. So do you guys want to know what they are or? Yeah. Okay. Well, it struck me for some reason that growing up on a space station, uh, I don't know. I just came up with to hell with phonies, right? The, 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 the character is all about, Okay, I don't care what you say you are, who are you? What do you do? Um, right. Just doesn't, you know, not, not, about, not about putting on a front face for anything. Um, plus one to control, plus one to command um, is what I ended up with from that. Right. Um, and then uh, I think that's all I get from the upbringing, yep. right? Oh, wait. Oh wait, yes, and, and I don't know why I thought about this. I actually held it steady until I looked at the, that was environment. When I went to upbringing, that's what snapped a few things into place and that's why I went back to the environment and right. made more sense. So, so um, well, I think one point I was going to raise earlier and then I distracted myself is that the characters are highly competent. Remember we, we were talking right. about the mm -hmm. competency of characters. And so they don't mechanically really improve you're not really going to see your right. attributes going up you're going to be making right. changes to things our values will change and our rank may change right that's pretty much the main those ones. will those yeah. will change uh but also uh focus choices may be swapped out from episode to episode that makes a lot of sense yeah and um which which means that uh there has to be a certain amount of communication at the end of episode four before episode five about what kind of vibe yeah. it is, yeah. which I find interesting because at the end of Star Trek episodes in the credits, the next episode was the background video yes. to the credits. Uh -huh. So you knew uh -huh. what was coming. It's like, what's that lizard creature? You know, kind of exactly. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I will try. Oh, look, to, Green Woman again. Cool. Right. Yeah, I'll try to give useful hints. Uh, mm -hmm. so that uh, those choices when they come up can can be made and talents you'll have the opportunities to to take different talents but uh, anyway so that gives us that back we see what did you get for what what did you decide to do about being from the home world in the home world uh i need to really look up more on <clears throat> the values because you know they're tied to yeah, environment yeah. and have to rank and all that so i think i need a bit more time on those sure uh, for attributes also, I think it has to be tied with my base attributes, but I think okay. I'll go with discipline. So I think that's a, that's a good, you know, a good place to set a direction at least. Uh, in this case, I think I'll go with command. Mm, and uh, I'm not necessarily training. Maybe, maybe my character is thinking of the captaincy, but I'm thinking more of the first officer or someone right. in the command style at least. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Um, so then when I rolled on background or upbringing, I think, Yep. When I rolled on upbringing, I ended up with publicity and diplomacy. And I just, and the cool thing about upbringing is that you can choose either to conform or to rebel. Right. And you have different results either way. And so I chose to rebel. I like the idea of being like, I'm on a space station. I've chosen to, to not do stare. That's the whole thing was, okay, well, I'm encountering all these different people and all these different aliens and stuff, maybe. And I'm not going to go by stereotype, right? So screw the phonies, right? Find out what they're really like. And so then I said, okay, well, this is cool. It's come together. It kind of rebels against the politics and diplomacy, which gives me, uh, certain, gives me certain characteristics. So I'm kind of getting an idea, right? They're, they're, I'm thinking kind of of a kid who's brought up on a military base, Right. My the parents are all about the stereotypes and their jobs and everything. The kids like, screw it, man. Everybody's just everybody, whoever they are. Sounds good. Right? Um, that's like the diplomat's kid who's, who doesn't take any of that shit seriously. Yeah. It's kind of so what that, I had that in fit in yeah. pretty nicely, I think. Yeah. Um, right, so, so that went going on. Mm -hmm. um, that was a that was option six, diplomacy and politics. 
Uh, so KC Starfleet, business or trade, agricultural. So I just rolled mine and I, apparently I got diplomacy in politics. Ooh, interesting. interesting. So, okay. so, so you can either I'm, conform or rebel. Exactly. No, I was thinking of that foil, that foil thing. So you go going for the rebel, and I'm going for the conform, right, conforming part. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm, cool. I'm the goody two shoe human from from Earth. <laughs> right. 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 Uh huh. No, it's a nice contrast. I don't know if we want to push that hard at every step, but it's nice yeah. for now. But yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. How many? At times least the contrast is there. Say yeah. <laughs> you green-blooded Vulcan. <laughs> really lovely. Okay. So each upbringing. Uh, gives the character a single point to add to one of their disciplines, with each upbringing having a choice of which disciplines can be increased. So you both have the same one. Scrolling to number six. Attributes. If you accept the upbringing, so that's you, KC, you're disciplined and well-versed in the arts of debate, increasing your control by one and your presence by two. But if you Whereas... rebelled... Right, it's a little one more widespread if you if you rebel. You're sort of fitness more one, broad. And fitness and too. reason, yeah. and yeah, fitness and reason, and also I get a plus one security in there somewhere. Yeah, that that's comes the in next discipline. Okay, right, right. Uh -huh. So the character's uh -huh. familiarity with the practices and perils of diplomacy, you can increase any one of command, con, or security. I just I chose security. I was starting to get the idea that the character again. I'm, Something about that military base kid image, you know, was sticking right. with me. And so basically, maybe, you know, maybe security was a big concern, right, at this star base. You have to protect the quadro right. triticale. Well, yeah, but it, and well, everybody had like an ID card they had to swipe to go anywhere, yeah, yeah. right, is sort of the idea I had. So basically, you, you just got good at, I know the language of security. So that sort of came to my mind. Um, All right. So now then when we some go to suggestions about focus here for right. this particular discipline, the discipline that you've chosen at this point, right? Right. So you chose security. And so it's saying that focus for security should relate to the character's preferred way of applying your skills. Right. Right. And they give some suggestions. But... Mm-hmm. Talent. You gain a talent from the standard list of talents. And you both have the PDF. That's what I heard and understood, right? All right. Yes. So mm -hmm. that's on page. The oft-referenced page 135. So at, at this point, just make a note that you get one standard mm -hmm. talent here. And, uh, and that's in addition to the one that we got from our species. Yes. Right. Okay. I did find in play that the species talents were really useful. As tempting as everything else is, right? Um, there's a certain immediate utility to being able to present that aspect yeah. of your character. Especially, I took you know, resolute, which is purely quantitative. I just have a higher stress. Yeah. Yeah. You'll appreciate um, it. Yeah. Um, he said menacingly. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Sounds like hit points to me. I want more of those. That's right. right. It's um, stress, man. It's stress. Starfleet Academy. Mm -hmm. Here's where we're finally making the decision between what shirt are we going to wear? The yellow shirts, or the, sorry, gold shirts. The red shirts, or the blue shirts. So command, operations, or science, you can choose or you can roll. Um, I actually went into, uh, at this one I chose because the, as I said, the snap together had started yeah. to occur and I said, it's gotta be ops for this guy, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that's what I went into. Um, operations, uh, oh, and there's tons of shit in here. I mean, we get a talent. We yeah. got focuses, we got, yeah, we, there's all sorts of stuff to do. And also in, for operations, I actually got to choose my attributes, I think, again. So not only am I human, and I got to spread those pluses where I wanted to, here, I also got to spread them where I wanted to. Right. So, it, but um, there's a little restriction. It's, it's three ones or one, two, and a one. Uh, yeah, I did. I, yeah. I behaved. Right. Um, I don't know how else you can split the three points, but I would yeah. put 0. 0.5 here. And... Yeah, yeah, I, I, 
I, I conformed to the instructions as best I could. Yeah. Um, and then uh, another, another yeah. value uh, is created here, which reflects right. your beliefs that arose during their time in the academy. So you'll notice that each of these things is formed at a certain point in the character's life. And when play starts, these things may or may not have been challenged before. Right, right. A long held Well, I, I decided at this point that my character realized that he needed to toughen up. So, so the, again, I'm kind of, as you can see, I'm leaning more and more and more in this direction. And, uh, and so plus two security, I was, I was starting to think of this, I'm, I'm thinking a security guy, right at this point, goes into operations. Okay, security. Um, and, and that this is where he, he, you know, may have been sort of a, I don't know if we want to be darker here. I mean, we want good two dimensional characters, <laughs> don't want to be too three dimensional. Um, but, but, you know, this is, this is where he gets that kind of security look, right? That kind of thuggish look that the security guys have. This is kind of where he gets that. So depending on what rank you end up in, I mean, there may have been a, a period of time where. Right, right. This is the time where he, this is the, where he learned how to take a punch. <laughs> right. So. Um, and not on the holodeck either. They don't exist. No, fuck holodecks. <laughs> oh, sorry. Did I say that out loud? Um, okay. So this is this is operations. What were you thinking about, Casey? So, the natural course for my character, I think, would be to would be to command. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I am actually looking at science just to see what would a, you know, someone who was brought up in one way but trained in, 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 in another right. would turn out to be as a character. Uh, but however, so far it seems that my upbringing is in contrast to. Uh, trying to be diversified in terms of skills. So I think I will have to stick to command for this case. Okay. Well, it's pretty juicy. Mm -hmm. And you can see it laid out before you. Yes. Okay. So this is the big one where, where you're identifying one of your primary skills. You'll end up with two skills that are noticeably better than, than the others uh, by right. the time you get to the end. And this is where the first of that thing happens. You get a, a, a bump of two to one. So of them. Okay, but you may not have any discipline higher than four at this stage. Right. And now you select three focuses, such as astro navigation or diplomacy or EVAs or something like that. Um, and just, just to be clear, the purpose of them is that you're going to be adding your attribute and your discipline together and this will create uh, a fairly large number under which you need to roll on the d20 and if you can do that and roll under the value of your discipline discipline with your focus being that's your critical basically that's basically. your value of your critical right. right okay and then furthermore if you have your value in play at the moment then you get plus two successes to whatever you get. If you spend your point of determination. If you spend your point, yes, yes, that's what I mean, yeah. So that, that's, that's, so, mm -hmm. that's gotcha. okay, okay. Cool. treated as rolling a one. You get a, an invisible yeah. D20 that's already rolled a one, which is worth right. two successes. It sounds weird to say rolling a one though, doesn't it, if you've been playing a lot of D&D. <laughs> 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 All right. Uptown, downtown, doesn't new, matter. whatever. Yeah. So on the official dice, they have the Star Trek Delta symbol as the one. So it feels really right. good to see oh, that right. come up. Of course. <laughs> okay. Um, and then you get another talent at this point as well. So this is mm -hmm. a pretty heavy step along. And value too, right. Yeah. So, so yeah. Value, big discipline bump, and, right. Uh, right. and a new talent. Again, this is from the, yeah. from the, the list on page 135. Yeah. So this is uh, this is a pretty you know strongly defining situation. Um, yep. So you see the example values reflect this like inexperienced and idealistic, or always prepared, always vigilant, or fast mm -hmm. ships and strange new worlds, or right. whatever. Um, okay, step five is career. Mm -hmm. 
So first, <laughs> I like we how it choose, starts. At this stage, yeah. the player has a choice to make about the character. <laughs> like, what if what if we've been? Like, yeah, what what has all this been all along? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's it. yeah. The decision is clear. The character is young, fresh out of the academy, and this is open even to the captain. Right, you know the the captain. Oh, I love I love this. This is actually quite fun to imagine. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I think we've seen that in a few movies, and then or experienced or veteran. Uh, mechanically speaking, you will not disadvantage yourself in any way. You're choosing right. For but you get a cool trait no matter what. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, are you a Chekhov kind of character designed there to be young and inexperienced to give that vibe? Are you? Uh, Who's experienced on the original show? Uhura, well, I was actually thinking Suru. of some of those older. Well, I was the, the ex, yeah, Uhura or Suru are definitely experienced. Um, arguably, I was. This is an aesthetic thing. It's kind of cool to look across the whole original series and look at the really experienced captains, the ones who are older than Kirk. Much older. They're yeah. all kind of fucked up. They are. You know. <laughs> Exactly. The captains go loopy when they get old. You know, I've noticed that. <laughs> That's their, I guess, their way of yeah. reflecting PTSD without really. Yeah, anything. or something. Well, a lot of them do. I mean, especially the ones who like take over a planet, or you know, or are are clearly like you know, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. You know, as soon as anything bad comes up. Yeah. Exactly. So, so there you go. Young, experienced, or veteran. Mm -hmm. The. Uh, Unlimited potential or whatever it's called. The something or other potential. Yeah. yeah. Undisputed potential. Uh, the young officer's talent is pretty slick. Right. It's really useful. Okay. It comes into play a okay. lot. But the veterans, <laughs> is it blows my mind. Does actually. the experienced get a talent? Uh, they have a, yes, a regular do. talent. Oh, just white, right. Open. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. Because I wanted my, this guy, I'm, I'm, I'm skewed. I'm hewing to the middle. I'm, I'm experienced. I'll just go find a talent that, that works. You won't be disappointed. Um, right. mm -hmm. I will go with Young Officer. Cool. Fresh out of stuff. It's, it's just, it, I agree. That was, your character was just begging for it. I completely right, exactly. agree. It's great. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is putting a limit on your character that you'll have no attribute above 11. Did you go no, for I science? I can't remember. Sorry, Casey. No, I, can't I, remember. I went with I went with command. Yeah. Okay, okay. So wow, you so you might end up being the captain after all. No, the fledgling captain. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good though. I mean, especially because I mean, I I was going to ask Joseph about this. If his character is Vulcan, would he at least consider not being the captain? I mean, in the original series, the idea of a Vulcan captain is just not in the picture. Right. It's interesting. Right. 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 So right. it's up to it's up to him. I mean, the death of the intrepid comes to mind. Well, yeah. I mean, that that that. Uh, I'm not saying no. I mean, if he totally wants to be a captain and to play a Vulcan, okay, cool. He's the first one. Who's going to argue? I won't. But on the other hand, the idea of a fledgling captain is just from Earth. Is just like fucking rocks. So yeah, that's just great. Um, right, so but anyway, those, those are musings, music. tabletop musings, no, no committee That's what meeting. the session's about. Yeah, yeah. Um, pure um, tabletop discussion, not, not takeover. Um, okay, cool. So we ended up with our, so I picked an experienced officer and you picked the fledging, but we both roll for two events, right? That's right. Oh, okay. So for the young officer, you're imagining that these happen during your training days in Starfleet mm -hmm. Academy rather than out and Maybe about. internship or table. something like that, you know, <laughs> whatever. And they must have internships. You gotta become a captain somehow. Now, right. there is this list of 20 suggested events and uh, to make my life easier, uh, these are the ones I like to use because uh, they are specific. But So it's yeah. exciting stuff like ship destroyed, death of a friend. Mm -hmm. uh, you were I there. liked a lot of them, I, I, I was sad I liked the ones I got, but I was sad not to get others. That's a good sign, right? Yeah, it's a good sign. Yeah. Um, All right, so, so I got that I dealt with a plague, and I got an alien artifact. Oh, nice. Or an ancient or alien? I forget. Are those two different? It's uh, there. There is discovering an artifact, and there are uh, conflicts with different cultures. 
No, I got I got the artifact one, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I liked this because I said dealt with a plague. That's not something you can like you you handle with a phaser or your fists. <laughs> so right. it really it kind of rocked me back a little bit. I mean, both of these gave the character a lot more perspective than than the the previous you know steps had led to. Right. And I was like, okay, this is where he expands a little bit. This is where his experience, right. you know, goes somewhere. And I said, all right, here's a good value. I, meaning you, meaning anyone, could be wrong. Right. <laughs> you know, that's, that's okay. Okay. You, you know, it's, it's step back. Don't, don't just barge in there. You know, you could be wrong. And, and I learned, and I, it gave me automatically uh, that I got, uh, well, I think we get, I get an open talent. And I also got like a plus one medicine from the, oh, that's it. Right. Yeah. I got an insight and a medicine um, and a focus. And then from the artifact, I got reason and engineering, which is not where the character had been going. So this is where the character like rounds out. It doesn't just become more and more and more of a tough ass, he becomes, I've had adventures, I've had perspectives, I could be wrong about things. And this step so I kind of liked him better, all of a sudden. Fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This stuff, um, mm -hmm. so that it can come out and play, like what was the- design? Sure, well, I mean, God, I mean, now, with this, not everybody has an alien artifact, man, I do. There you go. Right. Uh, or so it could be something like this city on the edge forever. Oh, I was also thinking, yeah, well, the, the adventure. So those are two different adventures, right? The artifact yeah. and the plague. And, um, and I also, <laughs> I was thinking about that horrible thing that the mirror Kirk has, right? His assassination thing. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> you know, no, I don't want one, but I just want to point out that, you know, that's, that's the kind of thing one might end up with someday. Yeah. What was that, Casey? Right. So I just want to clarify, I rolled two events. I rolled yes, two. two. All right. Okay. And as you create them for your basically what, what amounts to your backstory, uh, you can salt them into your academy days. Right. right. Training, this, training uh, trips and things. So I got a 12. Except this, this, is where the this is where the training went horribly wrong for the instructors in you each trade case. trade your ideals for a superior. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, oh, bummer. In the almost... academy, no less. <laughs> oh, awful. Nice. Yeah. You just got scarred in the academy, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> I toughened up. You got scarred. Yeah. So this, and I got a 10. A a transport 10. accident. Excellent. Oh. <laughs> well, this is cool because I like the, I like the next, I mean, sorry, I like the, the original series. It's, you can see why McCoy is a little shy of the transporter. <laughs> you know, he's got, he's got a point. <laughs> so both of these events, they ask you to, to answer two questions, right? So you don't have to answer them now. But as right. you're building your character, you, you think about um, oh, right. okay. the ongoing effect of this experience. So you, you were there when a transporter accident happened, or you experienced right. one yourself. How do you feel about transporters now, it asks. And, <laughs> right, right. and what specifically did you witness or experience? You know? mm -hmm. Uh, and the same with the betraying the superior. Who was the superior? Oh, man, that's the, yeah, these are all. And like the plague is good too. It's not just, oh, it's a plague. No, you experienced some shit. You actually had to make decisions. Right. You, you know, what did, were you like the only survivor or what, you know, what happened? So I, I haven't quite answered those yet, but I will. Um, so I, I and like as I say, I mean, it's, 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 at that, it's at this step that the character really opened up. You know, I, I was like, all right whatever decisions I have to make later, like the name and stuff like that, I know I'm good. So I you know, know who they to, are. Yeah. Right, I know what to do now, yeah. Um, All right, so the transporter accident gives you a boost to control. So that's starting right. to look pretty good, but remember uh, these are now capped at 11 because you're the young right. officer. Right. And discipline, you're getting a boost to con, but this can't be higher than four. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then, then finally, I really like the way that the very last thing you do for your character is just one more value. Yeah, yeah. Just one mm -hmm. more. But you look it over and you go, okay, you have one more value slot to fill. Now what is it? What is it? And that's, that's, a, that's actually really good character creation design. I like it. Yeah, I think so. Very much um, agree. I know the designer of the game pretty well. 
So I'm hoping to get him involved after we've played a little while and we can have a, a chit chat. All good, very much, yeah. All right, step seven, finishing touches. All right. This serves as your last chance to customize the character. Yeah. Which is not, not there, really true there, at all. There, there, you're going to be customizing yeah, know, the character every time we get experience. I was going to say, isn't that what I, what I do when I play? Isn't that what that is? But, uh, but no, the, the, the sort of cheerleading and we're playing a role-playing game now, campers, you know, sort of feeling to the here and there. All right. So here we go. Just to check our math, I guess. One final value for a total of four. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the suggestions they make is that it might be about relationships that the character has had, right? Either in the crew or to something else mm -hmm. uh, that you would like to be relevant. Um, and uh, then we move on to attributes. For Ron, nothing above 12. Right. And I ended up my highest, power. I have two at 10 and two at two and one at plus one. Maybe I, yeah, I've got a nine, a 10, an eight, a seven, a 10, and a nine. Does that sound right? Yeah, sounds right. Like your, your path through life has yeah. broadened your character. Yeah, Some my character is reasonably broad, I have noticed, which is kind of cool, and especially for a security guy. It. Right. Right. Um, and uh, no, so and then nobody we has anything our... over their limit. No. Okay. And then disciplines, nothing above five or four for KC. And no, I ended up with a four as my as highest. As your highest one? Yeah. Okay. So that's good. Um, four in security, three in command, which, no, two in command. Wait, wait, wait. I forgot. It has a base of one. Never mind anything I just said. I'll look at it. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> it has to total. I'm my sheet right now. I'm just going to screw everything up. It has right. to total 56. So just make a note next to it. Gotcha. 56 okay. points. Um, wait, what has to total 56? Attributes. Attributes. Right. What about? Disciplines, 16. I, yeah. 16. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, but it should up, be lower. It should one. Yeah. It should be lower for the young officer, right? No, I think you still have sixteen, right? It's just your caps are different. Your caps are different. Um, yeah, so you right. you okay, okay. things get pushed out. Yeah. Right. You should have four values, four talents, and six focuses. One for each discipline. One focus for each discipline. And as you go through the life path thing. And you know when you're when you're on your own and thinking about the character, go through each step of the life path thing again to get the suggestions right. about what its impact on character creation. Right. So you know where each one came from, or rather, you made it up when you were in that mindset. Right. Which makes sense. Yeah. Your stress mm -hmm. is equal to your fitness plus security. Fitness plus security, and then plus three for me as a human. Right. Yeah, if you have the resolute. I did. Talent. I took resolute. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my, my stress is insane. I'm like, yeah. I'm like the calmest <laughs> dude, right? Or the, I may not be the calmest, but I'm the most resilient when I, when I get hit with it. So just as a, I don't know, I don't know if it's a warning, but just as a, as information, the way the game presents injury, it recognizes the fact that phasers and disruptors kill people. Right. Right. So you end up being able to take an injury, which is equivalent to five points of stress. And at that point, the character is, has the trait injured and it limits what they can do. Right. And then if they get injured again, they're dead. Right. No, it's real straightforward. Violence is violence in this game. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah. go find it. Go. I hope you made up a cool supporting character because that's your dude now. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's basically it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I get that. I, I like it. It's it's. There's a lot of nicey nicey in the text of the game. You know, it's like, oh, we're all going to role play together, and we're all going to be such good friends, and we're all going to love the franchise so much together. Oh, by the way, fuck you, zap. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. I kind of like that. So the, the game was designed by an original designer and then those designs were finished. Not the, not yes. the design was finished, but the game was written right. by. The presentation was then shaped. Yeah. yeah. And uh -huh. you can feel the... I, I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> good. That's a good observation. I, I do feel that. Yeah. So. Um, All right. Uh, damage cool. bonus. May It may never come up. Who knows? On all attacks, oh. you add your dun -a, security. Dun -a, dun -a, dun -a. It will. <laughs> yes, as a protection and security mission, I, I think it's it's likely. So uh, your security adds to uh, your damage. This will make more sense later. Like if you're using it. No, that's fine. We'll, we'll get to all those mechanics as we go. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, my plan for this is to not do a... Anthony talks a lot about the rules session. But we'll just, just do as we go. Yes. We'll do. Yeah. yeah. I, I learned long ago, long ago, that, that the teaching of a role-playing game is extremely sectional, yeah. extremely developmental, and you will waste everybody's time. They will not learn a thing if you are talking about the subroutines of that kind of critical <laughs> before they've so made cool. up their characters. I know, I know. <laughs> when you get to 10th level, then you can choose between these spells. This one does this, you know, no. <laughs> What's a level? So, yeah, exactly. Once the characters spell are, level. <laughs> uh, are truly finished, once the characters are truly finished, we'll do the rank thing oh, okay. and what your role on the bridge is going to be uh, something may so inspiration may strike kc at this point um like on well Friday definitely i mean the, the, you can definitely see as our characters came into mind at their current status i mean it's it i'm, I'm quite excited to see what casey comes up with or no yeah. you're casey what joseph comes up with i mean i think it'll be Right, if he uh, keeps really the Vulcan or if he does something else. And, right, yeah. right. Okay. And so I don't consider character creation to be done until we actually start play. No, that's, and then that's at the fine, end of but the this first is what we do session, now. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the first adventure, because this is Star Trek Adventures, uh, we'll have an opportunity to have that you know, I took this discipline because I thought it... Right, there's a wiggle. Else. There's got to be a wiggle there, for sure. I mean, it's a pilot, right? I mean, effectively, we'll be running exactly. a pilot. Yeah. Let's <laughs> not have those big silver things on the... Uh, <laughs> on, each, on each command console. Yeah, so you got it. Yeah. So there's a... Oh, yeah. uh, here in the wiki and, and in the book, you'll see a list at the end of the life path section, a list of different ranks and roles, like the chief medical officer and the science officer. And, and we'll have to talk to each other yeah. about what we care about and what the rank we have is, and if it makes sense to have that role at that rank, and and we'll sort all that. It's also the, yeah. There, there's an interesting notion. Just because I just finished a rather fun whole season of primetime adventures. Yeah, yeah. Um, and one of the the things that I I'm thinking about for this is how tricky it is, especially as, you know, growing up with the series, how tricky it is to, there's three, three categories. One category is too emulative. If it was in the show, we do it. And we're excited because we did it just like we saw in the show. Right. <laughs> and that's, that's one thing. Yes. Um, and that's, a, that's annoying. That's fanboy stuff. Right. Then the, uh, the other one is um, too meta, which would be great for like primetime adventures to say, all right, we're all ensigns serving coffee. We're going to do that. We're going to be those guys, right? This right. is the series about those guys. And that can be kind of cool, but here it's too meta. It's too, you know, perspective-y, judge-y, or, uh, or, or, deconstructive right um so here it's really interesting we really are making our spin-off show which is supposed to be good right and I, I like that that's a cool thing right yeah. um just to give some some insight when i started star trek adventures the first time uh i was running it because uh Dave, I consider Dave a friend, the, the original designer. I love Star Trek. 
I never really had any success getting a Star Trek game to the table other than the right. Starfleet Battles <laughs> one. Right, right. Um, not because people didn't want to play them, but because it was going to be, okay, when this campaign ends, but that campaign lasted for 10 years, so it never ended. Right. And then I was right. here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, so I wanted to do Star Trek, and I wanted to try 2D20. And uh, reading, reading the rules of Conan is, has a lot of additional detail, which seemed like more time than I had available. But Star mm-hmm. Trek, it just it was really clicking with me. Right. But I right. didn't want to play it as a player. I know exactly what you mean. Right. Right. Um, you didn't want to be the showrunner. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. So as I took it on as a game master, it's like. Well, I'll give it a try. Mm-hmm. And I, I really liked it because uh, I wound up in the position by surprise. I surprised myself by getting to be much more audience than I thought I would be. As the, so, that is, yeah. The, oh, the, okay. the, the characters, it really focuses on the protagonism of the, of the player characters. And so that's cool. Yeah. Um, Casey, I don't know if you're familiar with some of my uh, somewhat irritating or at least irreverent game jargon. Um, but the, the, um, there's something that you can find in a lot of, of role-playing rule books where it assures you that the game master you, is the story person. It's their story. Right, right. And it might say guide, or, but, but there's always a strong element of control and presentation, right? right? And, but at the same time, the players play the main characters and can do what they want. And you're like, exactly. <laughs> right. So I, 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 I took the term from Lewis Carroll and I said, that's the impossible thing before breakfast. Right. <laughs> you can believe in the impossible thing before breakfast if you want to, but <laughs> you're not going to get it. <laughs> you're not gonna get it. <laughs> yeah. Right. And well, so I, it's kind of nice to let go of it and just decide which one for God's sake and just do that. <laughs> you know? Um, so there, there was something about how the part of the text was written, which got my dander up, got my back up, and I was like, well, you know, I'm just not going to like this. But, uh, but as the game master, I had, I had real emotional moments. I got to tell you, the bleed yeah. was powerful. I'm a stand-up great. GM yeah. usually, so I was actually yeah. at a podium in a in a mm-hmm. uh, in a boardroom running the game. Everyone's seated around the boardroom, just like in Star Trek. I was going to say, I mean, did you have a little tri-viewer thing going on there? Didn't have that, but we did have, we did have rear view projection screen and we had display panels all around us and I filled them with star charts and stuff. I had a a great time, but I'm fucking LARPing on us now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, (laughs) it was just, it was just really something. Mm -hmm. uh, Oh, well, you see, now we're going to suck. That's okay. You can (laughs) suck. (laughs) But what I, but what I wanted to, to bring up was that it was a next generation thing and my contribution pushed us toward the feel of the original series i can imagine it would (laughs) yeah yeah well but you see that's the that's the point it it is our show right Right. whatever it it is we do it's going to be our show it definitely became distinct like i could i could feel confident that someone listening to the recaps or you know a fly on the wall listening to the game would say this is Star Trek. Right. But at the same time, it wasn't emulating the right. original series right. and it wasn't emulating Trek or Deep Space Nine or, or TNG or whatever. It was. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's, yeah. that's what I like about what we have proposed to doing. And you may have seen on the Patreon, on my Patreon, uh, Anthony, uh, Casey, I, I posted a, a little movie at my Patreon that I made a little presentation called Kubayashi Maru My Ass. <laughs> um, and the, the point that that directly referenced was the fact that in my opinion or my position is that Kirk is written extremely variably because it's whatever the, 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 the writers were writing situations. They weren't really writing characters. And so Kirk just became the guy he needed to be to be the protagonist of that episode. And so um, the supporting actors were far more able to create a consistent persona than the lead. 
And so, um, and then of course, several writers fell in love with Spock. And so, you know, gave, and I, as I understand it, Nimoy was fairly headstrong in interpreting the character and kind of refused to do things that weren't consistent as he saw it. Right. Whereas, you know, Shatner basically just had to do his job. Okay, I'm a martinet. Okay, I'm a free thinker. Okay, I'm a lover of justice. Okay, I'm a badass, whatever it is. And if you, time. if you zoom out far enough, you can yeah, kind yeah. of see Kirk. But I remember yeah. after The Wrath of Khan came out, uh, I don't remember what year it came out. That was, was that was actually 81-ish, I think. 81 or 82, 82, somewhere in there, right? Yeah. So like I'm 11, 12 years old. And mm -hmm. I can remember leaving the theater with my dad. And he says, you're thinking about something. What, you know, you didn't like this one? And mm -hmm. I said, no, no, I really like this one. Khan was great. You know, it was great. They had mm -hmm. the original actor. I was really excited about that. I said, but I just don't think that Kirk would lie like that right right um and so then we had a long talk about well what did it mean that he reprogrammed right. the computer like did he just make it did he remove everything that prevented winning or did he right. enable a cheat and mm -hmm. it was an interesting conversation yeah i guess it yeah. bothered my dad too <laughs> right right well it's it's not necessarily that you see i for whatever reason and i think actually you know what i know it was, I was trained by Roy Thomas in the Conan, the Barbarian and Savage Sword of Conan magazine, that authorship matters. And so I was already understanding that the Conan books that I bought were not a text. They were an artifact. That there were multiple authors, multiple decades, that most of what people encountered as Conan was, was fanboy, was fanfic. Right. And um, and that they even purported to be canon because they were packaged, you know, in these books in a series. Right. And uh, and I was reading them and I said, OK, I got to step back. I mean, the, the comic is only working with the Howard material and then Thomas's fanfic. All right. So I learned that before Conan the Barbarian, the movie came out. So I'd already realized this. And so by the time I saw The Wrath of Khan, which I didn't see when it came out, I saw a few years later, I realized was not, you know, I, I didn't have to say that this is Kirk and he would or would not. I didn't have to say that anymore. It wasn't even an issue. Um, and of course, at that moment, realized that I, would, I was divorced from fandom forever. <laughs> divorced. I just completely, you know, I, I all of a sudden had failed to converse with most of fandom. Um, but in, uh, in my case, the reason I bring up this little thing is I talked about why I never had role-played Star Trek. And in fact, of all my role-playing, science fiction is a minority. It's not absent, but it's a minority. And I, I basically don't want to share my Trek. I don't want to share my my science fictioniness with people if I have to encounter those things that I don't want to deal with, you know, as, as a purveyor, as a consumer of the material. And it's not just that I, you know, I, I don't really have anything against any of the other series. I don't, I don't like wish they didn't exist or anything like that. I don't think they're like wrong, you know, to be out there, whatever, you know, they're historical phenomena. Right. I'm not going to fight it, but I don't have to believe in Star Trek as a common thread. I don't have to have an image of how they all work together. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to. And so, yeah, well, it's kind of nice. A friend of mine once told me that they, I frustrated them because I'd watched, I didn't watch television. I watched shows. And that's not right. You have to watch television. You have to care about whether the series gets canceled or not. You have to care about whether this actor like left the series or not. You have to care about whether it gets renewed or not. You know, you have to be in it. You have to like watch it. You know, it's not right, you know, to, to not be watching it as it came out and like be stressed about these things. And it's no fair just to watch the show. I mean, anybody can do that. And so, um, and so they kind of have a point. And I, and I actually understand it because I do feel that way about comics. 
when somebody says, oh, yeah, I read Watchmen. I'm like, you read that paperback. You didn't suffer. You didn't pay for Watchmen, you know, with your, with your stress between issues. And then when it got delayed and took like two years to come out, you know, the stretch between issues became longer and longer. You know, you didn't, you didn't suffer. You didn't read every paragraph in the back matter carefully, you know, trying to put it together and find the clues. You didn't deserve Watchmen, right? So I, I, kind, of, I, I kind of see the point, but I guess I just don't connect that way with TV. Um, so it's uh, so yeah, I, I that's why I've kind of always like been real cagey about you know the playing any of these games. We did a Babylon project though when Babylon Five was still running, yeah. um, and the Babylon project is really kind of interesting because for one thing, it was really edgy relationship between role playing and other media at that point. Role playing was the new shit hobby right comics had finally kind of chinned themselves up and said us too us too us too right and you couldn't quite diss comics as bad it was starting to be realized how much of it comics were being used for movies you know under the table at that point um and but comics were sorry but role playing was still garbage you know just crap nobody you know comic book writers all sneered and spit at role playing because now they had to look good right they were they were you know art now (laughs) <laughs> so they they had to turn around and just like movie makers had to spit on comics for a while same thing and so um so the 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 game had the uh the source material from first season only for babylon 5 at most second season maybe just first and um it also was it, 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 it introduced a lot of things just to make it a role-playing game. All of a sudden, all the different races <laughs> had all these different attributes and stuff that are not evident in the show, you know, at all. Right. Um, and so, so they had to kind of splat it. I mean, again, it's the 90s, right? You, you want to have your Centauri source book coming up, you know, in the can. And so um, all these, so it, it was interesting because we decided at the time that we would play on the Babylon station, but that we would be playing below decks. We were going to be, you know, smugglers, low level officers, um, you know, people living their lives in there, you know, no, and, and that, but we decided to do, to play concurrently with the show as we were watching it as the seasons were still coming out. (laughs) Right. And so that's, so we were just like, we were watching this. This was, I think by season four, which was really the one where it really, that's the best, right? It's the one that has the war in it and ramps up everything and, you know, brings in all the Tolkien, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so we, um, so we, we, we were really enjoying ourselves because we were like, we had to work with constraints, but we got to play the series that you never saw. Right. And so it was the way we cut, we called it the underbelly game with, with a given sequential canonical material that, that you can do this. And that way you avoid the, I mean, if I'm going to play Babylon five, I don't want to go off on some other no account space station. Right. I don't want to, I mean, it it says you can go play before the era of the show. And I'm like, Oh yeah. Right. You know (laughs) what? So um, maybe for the fifth campaign. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we sort of, but you can see, I mean, any material of this kind, you're going to struggle with this. You're going to kind of, you know, thank God we saw a few other starships in the original series, right? Otherwise we would be, we'd be helpless. You know, we'd be going, wait a minute. Of course, they all seem to come to grief. Other starships are there for the captain to go mad and for the get blown up and to succumb to this or that, or yeah, disappear and stuff, (laughs) you know, it's all bad news for them. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a it, role playing still struggles with it. How do we relate to our source material? And is, and is this just all an elaborate fanfic? Is that what we do here? <laughs> right. Right. Um, I mean, what are we responding to? Are we yeah. uh, taking the opportunity to um, to role play within the constraints of the of that mm-hmm. setting or situation? 
or are it's, we trying to yeah. portray that situation? It's not the same thing. It it's particularly it's difficult when you, um, when you bring that underbelly like a little too close. And I think the, quint the, the perfect example, in fact, the Ur example, is that early, early Star Wars D6 um, adventure where you end up delivering the crucial information to R2-D2. Right. And I think role-playing culture fell in love with that and maybe fell in love a little too much that, that, yeah, that what they do. Yeah, well, part of it, I mean, it can kind of see the appeal, but on the other hand, you just railroaded the whole adventure to get there. Right. I mean, yeah, it, that, it has to be. Our you have to railroad it so that... It. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and so the and so you, you get this contradiction. Oh, good. You get to be in the universe. And how many of those uh, subsequent second edition D&D adventures, the ones that are really integrated with the, the, the canonical setting, right, whether it's Forgotten Realms yeah. or Dark Sun or whatever. I have tons of those adventures in those box sets. And all of them are all about, and you're in this battle on the stairs and you can read in the novel about the battle on the stairs. Well, your character is there, you know, and, and you're kind of like, yeah, my character's over there scratching his ass is what he's doing. <laughs> you know, I got to kill a lizard guy. Okay, cool. You know, I guess I'm in between these two paragraphs in the novel where some unnamed <laughs> lizard guy gets killed by some unnamed supporter. Right. Um, and, but that's, that's what they were selling, right? They were selling that weird interface where you get to be there, but so what? <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's a weird, the, that relationship is very odd, but it's marketable because you can sell multiple things. Right? Where I find that I fall, especially in, in Star Wars, where you well, have- Star Wars is brutal for this, just brutal. <laughs> yeah, but you have so little- uh, like just using the films as a reference, you have so little broader universe uh, information. So if you just use the films, you if know. If you where just use the... like the first, even by itself, it's awesome, right? Yeah, You're like exactly. an early traveler again, right? It's like who knows, right? But <laughs> so on the other hand, it's also full. I mean, but how many how many fans of Star Wars are you going to find who are willing to do that? How many are brandishing their library of you know? This, well, that book was canonical, but now it's not anymore, you know, and then you get these legalistic people, you know, these, these like, these, these Talmudic discussions, right, of, of legitimacy of this or that, and what it means, if it is legitimate, then what does it mean? Well, the force can do this. Right? I have been spared such yeah. things. Oh. Uh, but I've gotten a lot of enjoyment when people realize that some event in the film is happening now somewhere right, else right over there right yeah. the word of it comes along or whatever we had fun with that in the babylon project too all of a sudden like you know security clamps down on everything and we're like what well we had just watched the show where some horrible emergency had occurred and been averted and we were like i, I can't get my smug my shit smuggled now this is terrible <laughs> right so yeah um that's what i like all right. Well, I think this, uh, as a first run, has been pretty successful. I'm liking and, it. And uh, I don't think we had any audio issues, and I don't feel like there was lag. It seemed not. Uh, I had not, some, not as a but yeah. just briefly. Mm -hmm. From me or just I general? believe it was mine. I, I believe it was my connection. You just okay. uh, cut me off for, a, for a, maybe a five seconds or so. But it was been smooth out of it. Okay. So, um, tentatively, this time is fine for everybody. This works very well for me. Joseph seems like, does he often have it? Does he have an obligation? He just has to rearrange his office hours. Right. Okay. The, the only issue for me is that I prefer to play. I mean, I'm getting anxious. My, my time, and also playing on screen is tiring. We talked about this. Yeah. Two hours is a really f huge session for me on screen. Yeah. So if we keep it you know, below that, I'll be fine. I, I can predict based on past sessions that I will be 
I will be doing 90 minutes to two hours, but two hours max. That sounds great. Okay. okay. Wicked. So I will wait for responses back about whether you can or cannot be invited to teams. And if that, if that works, then I will further populate the wiki with uh, useful items mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it's open for anybody to do that. So as we play and you meet uh, people and as you create secondary characters, you'll be putting them in the wiki in the secondary characters section so that when we're playing and, and you know that you're playing, I don't know, Ensign Mahmood, and you can't remember what Ensign Mahmood is about, you can just open it up and, and say, oh yeah, right, he's, he's that guy. <laughs> okay. Well, Have then. fun, everybody. Take care. All right. All right. Be well. All right.